First into the den is Catherine Swift from Brighton. And for this entrepreneur, commerce is about more than just cash. The business was born out of adversity. It's got a big beating heart behind it, and that's what drives it forward. Hello Dragons, my name's Catherine Swift and I'm the founder of OMGT, a specialist matcha green tea company. And I'm here today to ask for £50,000 in exchange for 7% of my business. Quality matcha is grown in Japan and one cup of matcha has the equivalent nutritional content of around 15 cups of regular green tea, which is why we started drinking it eight years ago when my mum was diagnosed with breast cancer. I discovered this whilst I was project managing a breast cancer research appeal. The research had a focus on antioxidants and I knew there was an antioxidant in green tea called EGCG they'd shown to have the potential to fight cancer stem cells. So I wanted mum to drink the green tea with the most EGCG in it. And because of how matcha is cultivated and processed, it was that tea. We're already stocked in around 60 outlets, including Planet Organic, Dalesford Organic, Fennec, Victoria Health. We're soon to launch in Harvey Nichols and a national chain of gyms. So moving on to our latest launch. Imagine a health drink that tastes good, has no sugar, no preservatives, just a multitude of health benefits and gives you a boost of energy. After two years of research and development, we've launched our innovative twist cap ice matcher, a truly healthy option. The focus is now on distribution and marketing and we have ambitious growth plans, including export to Europe and worldwide. If you're interested in getting involved in matcha, your time is now. Would you like to sample some matcha? Yes, please. Yeah. Powdered tea and instant bottled matcha are the package on offer from Catherine Swift. You can start with original and work your way to mint. She's looking for a £50,000 investment for 7% of her business. So what you do with these, basically, is twist, push, shake. Just all over me. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Oops. I'm just frightened to death of doing what you just did. I don't mind you getting wet. As the dragon struggle to get to grips with opening the product. See the water did come out. Jenny Campbell is hoping to have better luck getting a handle on the business. Hi, Catherine. Hello. Great pitch. Really <laughs> crisp and clear, and you look great. So you're a great advocate for your own product, which is fantastic. And all of this started because Mum became poorly. Mm -hmm. Would you mind if I asked how Mum is today? She's good, thank you. Good, yeah. excellent, OK. And how long ago did you start this business then? We started trading just under three years ago. Right, OK. So how is business going now? Where would you say you're at? We're growing year on year across every, every channel. You mm -hmm. know, we're increasing sales. Um, and I can, what were your sales last year? Last year, our turnover was 92,000. OK. We had a gross profit of 48,000 and a loss of 16,000. This year, so far, and we're just in month seven, mm -hmm. we've done 75,000 with mm -hmm. a £40,000 gross profit, and currently we're tracking at a loss of about 8,000. OK, so let's say I'm a potential convert to this pr product I'd, I'd never heard of. Yeah. Um, so I go and buy one of these, and I assume in here is the powder, yes. the magic powder. But when I make my three cups of tea a day, do I have to find a little no. bowl? No, Put the powder in, mix it up, sieve it... No. To make my cup... No, OK, no, so how do asked. I get to my cup of tea from here? Probably the most useful is, the, is, is a tea strainer. You know, if you sift the, the matcha through the tea strainer, add a little bit of water, mix it into a paste and add, add more water to it, once you know what to do, it's just as easy as making a normal cup of tea or coffee. Not quite. Hi, Catherine. Hi. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Um, <coughs> can you tell me a bit about the price? So, you sell it in a tin, is yes, that right? Yes, yeah. And uh, how much is that? So the entry-level matcha, which is the light green tin, retails at £17.95 for 30 £17 servings. £17.95, that's really expensive. Wow. Um, it, if you benchmark it against other matcha brands, it's not really expensive. It's an organic product, which obviously has a premium on it anyway. Catherine, you've got a very expensive product. It works at about 40p a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. What's the price of a normal cup of tea at home? 
4P. 4P. <laughs> so you're saying that you want to convince your consumers to pay 10 times more because it's called matcha. Mm -hmm. That creates a very, very small percentage of people in the market and it becomes a very, very niche brand. I would say it's premium rather than niche and I think the fact that this trend on naturally healthy, which is growing massively, people are becoming more and more health aware. That I do know, but at the end of the day, you've got to think of the consumer. You will find that if you're selling this for, how much is that, 17.95? That one's not, that's more expensive. That's more expensive? Yeah. Oh, how much is this one? That one retails at 33 pounds. 33 pounds, how many cups? 30. So one pound, 10, a cup of tea? That is for real matcha aficionados. Okay, so you're talking about the fraction, fraction of the population who would buy this? Yes. As Tuka Suleiman gets in a stew over the price of the tea, health magnate Tej Lalvani wants to know if the product's promotional material is playing by the book. I guess, for me, the concern is in terms of the, the evidence in this brochure, because you, you're talking about cancer and the effects on that, and that's very, uh, you know, dangerous territory in terms of legal claims with ASA, Food Standards Authority, etc. Everything that's in that brochure, we don't say it, it cures this, it does that. All we say is it has the potential to. Catherine, I have got to tell you, when I read this, I went... <sighs> Backed by science, professor here, um, clinical studies in green highlight, scientific studies in green highlight. It's a little bit close to telling me that if I've got breast cancer, this is going to give me a better chance. And you might believe that, but you can't claim that. So maybe I just need to tell my story slightly differently. But you it's the thing that, you know, it's the thing that, you know, I, it's the pa passion that drove me forward. Catherine, I know <laughs> that. The trouble is, without being able to tell that story as strongly as you telling it in there, I think you struggle. I'm really sorry, Catherine, because you're just the type of person I would love to invest in. You're really very good, but it isn't that product. I'm really sorry, but I'm out. OK. You came into the den with a requirement uh, for £50,000 for 7%. Uh, how much do you own of the business? 78% um, of the business. And who owns the other 22%? got three other shareholders, one that's just got below 5% and yeah. two others around about 9%. And what valuation did they invest in at? Um, the first round, we valued it at, I think it was 800,000 and the latest investment that I got was when we were basing up post-investment on, on a valuation of a million. So you're coming into the den really at broadly a little bit less than those valuations still? Post-investment, it's more like £700,000 yeah. because I obviously recognise the value that a dragon brings. You don't really because the business isn't yet making any money and you've got a value of £700,000 on there for offering 7%. So that's not recognising a dragon. It's a top evaluation for a business that's growing but only turning over 165,000 and still losing money. Jen, if you're worried about the valuation, why don't you put an offer in and, uh, and see if she accepts it? OK. Um, when I invest, I need to n love the product. I don't love the product, I'm not an advocate of it. I can't see myself faffing around with powder and sieves, I'm sorry. I'll take my healthy lifestyle in a different route. Um, so I'm not going to invest today, and I'm going to say I'm out. OK. Catherine, when I look at the business and I look at the potential, I can't see it as a business that has got scale. And I want to be in a position where I can invest in a business, where I can make it grow but this would be difficult. So on that basis, unfortunately, I'm not going to invest in matcha tea today. OK. And I'm out. Hi, Catherine. Hi. This is a market I actually don't know a lot about. 
So it's a bit of an education. I actually think you've done really well because you're in Dalesford and you're in the outlets you're in. And then I come to the conclusion that I wonder the adoption of this product in the mainstream, in the real consumer marketplace, to make it a, a great business. But can OMG go anywhere else? I mean, really, for me, the ready-to-drink product is what we would call our matcha for the masses product. So we've also got a couple of relatively high-profile ambassadors. We've got Jamie Bolch and cricket player Alex Stewart, literally, on the starting blocks, ready to help with the promotion of this product and to get it into gyms. Do the ambassadors have any interest in the company commercially? They don't have shares in the business, but... Um, you don't you pay know, them? No, they would get paid a percentage of profits. Ah. Uh. OK, there's a conflict there, Catherine, immediately for me. Don't say that. There is, because when you have an ambassador that's actually doing it because they believe in the product and they're doing it just because they can, and then you go, well, actually, no, they get a percentage of profits. They make more money the more products are sold. Yeah. That, that, that's disconnected. So because of that, I'm not going to be able to invest and say that I'm out. Catherine's marketing strategy doesn't sit comfortably with Peter Jones, who declined the opportunity to align himself with her brand. Does vitamin giant Tej Lalvani see a synergy with this health-conscious business? Catherine, I really like what you've done. And, you know, in terms of what you need, really, is, is the exposure and distribution of this product, which I can dramatically help for you in all channels. The concern I have is really the mass adoption of this product being in a powdered format. I know you've got the drink. The drinks business is a really tough business. And to me, when you look at that, it looks like a bottle of water. It's very difficult to understand just from that, that there's powder on top, you twist it, you shake it, and then it mixes. Mm -hmm. I really think that you need to have a tea bag format for this to work and grow it and to get people to try it. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I won't be joining you on this journey. Okay. For all those reasons, I'm out. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Catherine fails to convince the dragons that her tea had the OMG factor, and she leaves the den empty-handed. Press the button on the left, Catherine. The lift will come. A bit shell-shocked. It's all right. I still feel passionate about my baby, you know. I still totally believe in it, and I, you know, I know that there's a big future ahead for OMG tea. No, I thought Jenny might invest, and you might invest, and I thought you were going to match her. You I was going to match her. Is <laughs> it the... Not a match. Match of the day. <laughs>